and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest where it got sunny since my last class, which is great. That's our changeable spring weather. Hi Divas, hi Anna, hi Shiro Jidi. Nice to see some of our regular students and get to see our members as well. Hi Sammy. In this class, we are looking at the listening section of the IELTS exam specifically focusing on part one and two practice and some tips today. Uh, we will be uh, uh, using the materials from our websites. Uh, these lessons are presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Please do visit us there for general IELTS help. Visit us at g-i-e-l-t-s help. Dot com. On both of our websites, we've got loads of materials for you. And for today, I'll give you a 20% discount as well. Um, use code R4TYJ when you check out. Uh, there'll be a place where you can click use coupon code. Put in that code and you'll save yourself 20% from the full price. Uh, our websites, they look like this. This is the general one here with the green background. You can click that big red button to join us there. And this is our academic one here with the blue background. You can click that big red button to join. If you have questions, students, you can always send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com, and I will answer your inquiries in due time. Uh, again, these classes, they run from Wednesday to Saturday. Uh, for at 13.30 and 15 o'clock Central European time. So just check uh, with Google to see the time zone difference, but this is according to CET, which is Central European time. All right, everyone. So uh, we'll get right into our listening here. Um, this listening is coming uh, from our first exam book, and it's uh, test number two, which is actually the third exam after the review and test one. And uh, so if you have um, access to our premium package, of course, you'll find the audio uh, CD uh, three track number one, because it's part one that we're looking at today. Now, uh, there have been a couple of slight changes in the listening uh, section for the IELTS from 2020. Uh, they're kind of just uh, administrative uh, changes for the most part. Uh, firstly, the one important change for students is you will not see this kind of example question in part one. They've taken out the example question. It just gets right into the audio uh, for questions that you need to answer. So pay attention to that. And then um, the other uh, kind of notation that they change you see here it says section one you're not going to see that you're going to see part one and also in rare cases they referred to page numbers they're not going to do that anymore um, so they're not going to say turn to this page or question on this page that's another small change okay everyone uh, so i'm going to uh, start the listening audio here in just a moment a couple of important points before i begin uh, firstly, please, uh, students, do not put your answers, do not put your answers into the chat uh, because that's confusing and unfair to some students. So uh, make sure that you put your answers on a separate piece of paper uh, or in a separate document, and we will go through the answers together after. Now, to play this audio, uh, the best I can do is play it through my... Uh, microphone and my Bose speaker. So if it's quiet for you, please try to use a headset or turn up the volume. Okay, volume on my end is maxed out. All right, so we'll get right into it. I'm just going to hop over to our website here, uh, log into uh, my student account. Once I do that, uh, then I can uh, open up the audio CDs section here and go to track number three. We have lots and lots of audio, as you can see. Um, so I'll go to CD three, track one, and we're gonna get right into it here, students. So get ready, um, because we're starting right now. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions, Inc. and World ESL Tutors. 
You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test, you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section one. Listening section one. You will hear a conversation between two women as one of the women registers her daughter for nursery school. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Good afternoon, Monterey Primary, Jane speaking. Hello, my name is Diane Johnson. I was hoping to register my daughter for nursery school at Monterey Primary. Of course, Miss Johnson. Would you like to register your daughter for full day nursery school or half day or full day plus after school care? Oh, just the half day. I don't think Matilda could handle a full day away from home just yet. The woman says she would like to register her daughter for half day nursery school. So A has been indicated for you. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Good afternoon, Monterey Primary, Jane speaking. Hello, my name is Diane Johnson. I was hoping to register my daughter for nursery school at Monterey Primary. Of course, Miss Johnson. Would you like to register your daughter for full day nursery school or half day or full day plus after school care? Oh, just the half day. I don't think Matilda could handle a full day away from home just yet. So your daughter's name is Matilda Johnson? Yes, let me spell it for you. The first name is Matilda. M-A-T-I-L-D-A -A, and the last name is Johnson but it's not the common spelling it's spelt J-O-N-S-S-O-N -S -S my husband is Swedish which explains the different spelling Right, and what is Matilda's date of birth? She was born December 25th, 2006 So she was born at Christmas, that is incredible Yes, she was an incredible present to get for Christmas It certainly was the most memorable Christmas I've had Yes, I would imagine. OK, so now I need Matilda's personal education number, which she should have received in the post recently. I don't remember receiving such a letter in the post. It would have come from the Department of Education and they always post things in yellow envelopes. You don't remember seeing a yellow envelope in the post? In fact, I do, but I didn't open it. My husband did. He didn't mention anything about a personal education number. Now he's away with work and I won't be able to reach him. Well, we can retrieve the number. I'm going to need your national insurance number as well as your husband's. I'm going to need your husband's name as well. My husband's name is Eric, with a K instead of a C on the end. His last name is Johnson, of course. His national insurance number is DF987745W and mine is KL409115N. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. Right. OK, let me see here. All right. Here is a personal education number. I will give it to you now so that you can write it down for future reference. It is T5634019. Just to make sure, the first character is T as in Thomas. Yes, and this letter in front of the number shows what region the child is originally from. The T in this case refers to Tyne and Weir. That would be correct, I'd imagine. Matilda was born in Newcastle, which of course is in Tyne and Weir. Okay, 
So we have all the information about Matilda that we need. She is now registered for half day nursery school in September. Do you have any questions? Yes, I do. I was wondering what sort of training your nursery school teachers have. That is a very good question. Each of our teachers has, at a minimum, a two year diploma in early childhood education. Many of our senior staff have bachelor's degrees in education in addition to the two year diploma. And our departmental head, Miss Janet Roth, has a postgraduate certificate, bachelor's degree and diploma. Do not worry, Miss Johnson, your daughter Matilda is in very good hands. That makes me feel a lot better. Can you tell me when the first day of school is? And also, will there be an orientation day for new students and parents? The first day of class is the 5th of September. And yes, we do have an orientation day. It takes place on the 3rd of September from 9 to midday. Parents and children are strongly encouraged to attend. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Okay, students, and as I always say, make sure to uh, check your answers during that half minute. It's very important that you don't miss some easy marks. And we're going to go through the answers together and we'll talk a little bit of strategy as well. So let's go step by step. Here we go. So number one, um, what is the woman's husband's nationality? So where is her husband uh, from? Is he Swiss? That means from Switzerland. Is he Swedish or is he Swazi? A, B, or C. Now these are multiple choice, so make sure you're putting the letters and not the words into the spaces on your answer sheet. So Charlie uh, Sen says B, Alex agrees. Nope, Alex says it's A. Uh, Fariso Beck says it's B. Most uh, students are saying it's probably B. He's Swedish. Um, and that is correct. So he is Swedish. The correct answer is B. Um, the woman even uh, says something about his name. Um, anybody catch that part about the husband's name? Why we know that he's Swedish for sure. Uh, in part one, they usually give you the answer a couple of times for each question. Yeah, that's right, Alex. So the spelling of his name, uh, Johnson, is uh, Swedish. And she emphasizes that. She goes, yeah, my husband's uh, name is Swedish, you see. Um, so be patient in part one of the listening because you do get multiple chances for the answers. Okay. Now, um, for number two, um, the question is, how is the child's personal education number normally received? So how do they get the number for their kids registration by post, by email, or picked up from the school? A, B, or C? Okay, good. It was A, uh, so it's through the post. Um, and just out of curiosity, anybody catch how many times they give you that answer? So how many mentions uh, do you hear about getting this education number from the post? Is it A, only once, B, twice, or C, three or more times? How many times uh, do you hear the answer? A, once, B, twice, three or more times? Yeah, exactly. You hear it at least three times, okay? So, yeah, it's in the post. I don't remember getting that in the post. Yeah, my husband got it in the post. So there's definitely three mentions in there about that. So you definitely need to pick up these kinds of points here where you hear it three times over, okay? So post it is. Okay, now the next question. And again, you're always listening for the answer with multiple choice. You're not staring at the choices, okay? That can be confusing. Um, so careful about that. Uh, question number three, choose the correct letter, A, B, or C. Uh, why is the husband out of town? So 
the woman says, yeah, my husband opened that letter, but now he's out of town and I don't know where it is. Um, is he away on vacation, work or family reasons? Yeah, again, the answer here is B. So the first three are B, A and B. Um, the husband is out of town on work. Okay, good. So for those of you who got that, it's great. Uh, most of the answers for part one, they're very direct. So you actually hear somebody in the audio use the word work. Later on in part three, part four especially, you're going to hear a lot more paraphrasing for multiple choice. You're going to hear the word employment or job. You might not, you likely will not hear the word work. So in part one, you can listen for the words that are in the choices, but that strategy will not work for uh, part two, three, and four because the answers are paraphrased, okay? So careful with that. Part one is much easier that way because they actually say what you read. Um, all right, so here we go. You had to get uh, three to get number four correct here, again, with the letters. So which three pieces of information are required to retrieve the child's personal education number? Is it the woman's personal insurance number, the husband's personal insurance number, their national insurance number, um, and woman's and husband's name? So what do they need here? Uh, Diva says A, B, and F. Fahad says C, D, and F. Okay. Um, the correct answers here are C, D, and F. So for those of you who got that, Nashat, very good, um, you are right. Okay. Now, again, for this type of question, there are a couple of important strategies I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, let's get to number five, okay? So number five, how is the husband's name spelt? Is it spelt E-R-I-C-K, E-R-I-C, or E-R-I-K? Eric actually has all three of these spellings, um, but the husband is, of course, just one. Uh, which one of these is the correct spelling? Jainil says C, and it is. Uh, it's Eric with a K, like this. Um, of course, she mentioned that he's Swedish, and she also says uh, it's with a K instead. That's the key word here, instead of a C. In English, you'll usually find that Eric is spelt with a C, but of course, it depends where the person is from, and in a lot of other countries, it's spelt with a K. So the key word that you had to listen for in this case was the word instead. So K instead of a C. Uh, if, um, if she would have said as well as, it's with a K as well as a C, then it would have been A. Okay, but she didn't say that. She said instead. All right. So before we go on to six through... 10, uh, just a couple of important points for multiple choice questions. Uh, anybody remember which strategies are important for multiple choice? Those are those students who are regularly in these classes and have seen me talk about multiple choice strategy for the listening section. Um, anybody remember what you need to follow? So just a couple of points for you. So MCQ in the listening uh, section. Okay, number one is, uh, yeah, Bumika says, don't look at the choices, listen for the answer first. So, um, yeah, don't stare at the choices, hoping the answer uh, will be said, but instead, uh, listen for the answer. This is because uh, often the choice uh, will be paraphrased. For example, uh, job instead of work. Uh, so 
you will not hear the exact same words. Okay, that's number one. Um, so you have to be really careful about that. Uh, Rimshaw says make some notes, and that's right, Rimshaw, especially for those multiple multi-choice, okay? Um, so uh, another point is uh, change the uh, multiple choice question question into a statement. Okay, I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so here for number six, you see what is Matilda's personal education number? Instead of the question, think about the statement. Matilda's personal education number is. You're not going to hear the what question usually. You're going to hear the statement instead. Okay, so change questions into statements in the multiple choice. That's a really important strategy as well. Uh, number three, it's a very powerful one, is uh, use logic, especially when you feel you missed the answer. Okay, I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we go back to question four here, uh, this is in fact the type of multiple choice. I call these ones a multi multiple choice because it's you have multiple choices and you have to choose multiple answers in this case uh, three of them right so when you look at a b c and d the only difference is personal versus national okay um, what do you think is a personal insurance number so what is that what would be a personal insurance number what do you think that is? What does that mean? If I said my personal insurance number is, what do you think I use that for? So it's very different from your national insurance number, obviously. Um, the national insurance number in Canada is called your SIN number or your social insurance number. Okay. Uh, the British call it a national insurance number. Uh, what, is, what is an individual insurance number used for? So what would be your, or a personal insurance number? Yeah, so Jiwan says, well, it's obviously not for public use. Yeah, so if you can figure that out through logic, you can already figure out that probably the school does not need uh, those two, okay? So it's not for public use, most likely. Yeah, and you're right. It's not for public use. Um, Lepouche says maybe it's like a pin for an ATM. No, this would be like for injury, okay? In case of injury or accident, right, that would be your personal insurance number. So if you need uh, medical assistance, for example, um, that would be, and you have some kind of an insurance provider to cover your medical costs, uh, that would be a personal insurance number. So that's something that's insuring you as an individual that you pay for uh, so that you get that. So obviously that would be really weird um, to ask for uh, in, when you're registering your child for school. Okay, uh, now E, we don't need that one. Why don't we need the woman's name? So why not? So why do we not need the woman's name in this case? Okay, Kaur, the video looks good on my side. Uh, hopefully everybody else can see it as well. Okay, I think it might be on your end. Check your device. Okay. Yeah, Divas, uh, that's right. So personal insurance number would be like your life insurance. Exactly, Divas. That would be a personal insurance number. Um, Maksud, very good. Yeah, it was mentioned. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Shiro Jidin. We heard it earlier, okay? Um, so we don't need the woman's name. She gave it already, right? She already gave this. So clearly, we don't need the woman's name because that's how the conversation starts. She says her name. So the administrator has that. Um, she just doesn't have the husband's uh, full name, only the family name, right? So 
for this uh, question, it comes quite quick after number three, and it's a little bit tricky to catch all of these. But again, if you use logic, um, then you can figure these out. Now in the paper-based exam, when you have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, you can do that. Please don't start uh, using this kind of logic while the audio is going. That's very tricky. It, you'd have to be very fast. It's possible. But it'd have to be very, very quick. Uh, however, when you have 30 seconds to review your answers or in the 10 minute time, so in the 30 seconds to review or the 10 minutes to transfer, okay, 30 seconds for the computer based as well, uh, 10 minutes for the paper based uh, as an addition, so that makes the paper based a little bit more gentle, um, then you can use this kind of logic, okay, all right. So uh, pay attention uh, to that, absolutely, all right? So use your logic, okay? Uh, in fact, uh, this is just kind of a hint, uh, you have to be careful with this, but roughly half of the answers in the reading and listening questions, you can almost figure out just from logic alone without even audio or reading. Now, I don't recommend doing that, but if you're a person who has exceptionally good skills in logic and critical thinking, and when you're doing your practice exams at home, you'll notice that, wow, a lot of these questions you can just answer from common knowledge and from logic, okay? All right, um, so be really, really careful, pay attention to that. Now, another point that you can use here, of course, is quick notes, right? Um, so national insurance number. Okay, so use short form if you're going to do notes. Please don't try to write all of these words, uh, but you can do something like that to help remind you. Okay, yeah, that's one of the big, so I see some students saying, wow, my teacher never goes into that kind of detail. Um, we are not just teachers, but we're also a group of psychologists in our company um, dealing with education and educational psychology. And that's how we design all of our teaching is through psychology, through using critical thinking, logic, visualization to really help you boost not only your English skills, but also your communication and your thinking skills together. And that way you can maximize your learning and your scores in a relatively short amount of time. Okay, so definitely uh, try out our websites. If you like them, join the full course, okay? All right, um, so uh, let's keep going here a little bit uh, with the later questions. So you had that 30 second, or no, not 30, I think it's 20 second break uh, to review the next set of questions. And then on we go. So number six is, what is Matilda's personal education number? Is it A? B or C. So here you had to listen to some numbers um, and then give the right answer. Yeah, Jivan, send me an email and I can help you out, okay? Uh, the correct answer was A. Absolutely, good for you. So you had to realize that there's no letter in there. There was no P. It was a three, not a P. Um, and then, of course, uh, they say T. T as in, anybody catch that? So the speaker says T as in, what was the word that she used to confirm the letter T? Anybody catch that just for fun? Yeah, very good, Nashad. It was Thomas, Thomas. T as in Thomas. Thomas. T as in Thomas. Yeah, very good. Okay, so listen for those. They'll, they'll use that. Okay, so Z as in Zulu. Okay, R as in Roger. L as in Lima. It's not a bad idea to learn um, these kinds of uh, expressions. L as in Lima, Z as in Zulu. Okay, uh, there's actually a kind of a standard set. It has a name. I'm not sure what the name of that is, uh, but there's a naming for that as well. If you go online, you can find that. So L as in Lima, Z as in Zulu, X as in X-ray. Okay, so check for those, all right? Check for those because you can use those. So I know a lot of students find it challenging to spell their names and when they're talking to uh, people on the phone, a government office or a school, then they're like, 
Is that a P? Is that a, is that a B? Is that a P? Um, so there's a, a way to do that and everybody is familiar with that. So if you call them, then you can say P as in post, okay? D as in dog, B as in ball, okay? All right, uh, next question. Seven, where was the child born? A, Newcastle, B, London, or C, Monterey. Again, pay attention to use the letters, not the names, and make sure to use capital letters. So if you're going to write the letter A in your answer sheet, write the letter A like that, not like that, okay? Write it like this. I recommend using capitals. Yeah, very good, Jack. Patel, Patel, Pyle. Uh, Toad, don't do that. It was A, it was Newcastle which is, of course, in Tyne and Weir, as they say, in the audio. Very good. All right. Let's keep moving along. Nicely done, students. Nicely done. So here we had another of these multi-multiple choice. Uh, number eight, what two qualifications do many of the nursery school's senior staff have? One-year diploma, two-year diploma, three-year diploma, master's degree, bachelor's degree, doctorate degree. Uh, two of them. And the correct answers were two-year diploma and a bachelor's degree. So it was B&E. This one was fairly easy. And your answer sheet, you just do it like this, B, comma, E. It's for one question, so make sure it all goes into box eight in your paper-based exam. Answer key. Okay. Uh, and you do have to pay attention to the questions. Uh, she does mention that the um, principal or the head teacher uh, has a, a postgraduate degree, which would be a master's or a doctorate. We don't actually know. She doesn't say. Uh, but that's not many. That's just one. Okay. So really pay attention. Sometimes the trick is not in the choices. Sometimes the trick is in the question. Okay. So if you find the choices a little bit confusing, go back to the question because sometimes you'll realize, oh yeah, it's many. So it can only be these two, right? Can't be the other ones. So check the answer. Sometimes the trick is in the question, not the choices. Okay. So check the question. I mean the question. All right. Very, very important. All right. Here we go with the last set. This is a short answer or fill in the blanks here. Um, complete the notes below. R write no more than two words and or a number for each. The first day of class. So when does school begin for these little ones at nursery school? Uh, you should catch that. You should write a, an abbreviation. Don't write the full word. Uh, 5th of September it is. Uh, now, uh, Mozum. It's only uh, two words, okay? So if you actually write 5th of September, you will get this wrong, okay? It's sad, but it's true. IELTS is testing how well you pay attention to all of the information in the exam, not just the audio and not just um, the, uh, the answers. This one will be marked wrong because it's one, two, three words, and it says no more than two words. So you have to be very careful, even though it seems correct because of the question, it's actually wrong. So the easiest is sept five. Usually with September students, it's a four letter abbreviation with the T included. Okay. They'll take sept uh, five, I believe, but definitely I recommend the T. That is the more common abbreviation. Okay, yeah, Maksud is asking that. It, will they take SEP? I think they will, Maksud, but I wouldn't chance it. I've seen September abbreviated as SEP in some places, but the standard is usually with the T. So to be on the safe side, Maksud, add the T for September. Okay. All right, and again, pay careful attention here because like I said, IELTS is testing not just your ability to fill in a blank, okay? It's not that easy. Um, Alech, yes, fifth sept will work. It's okay, all right? Okay, um, and then uh, our last question here, something and children should attend orientation. 
So who should who should attend uh, orientation? Children? Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, who else? Uh, Shirojidin says parents for number ten. Parents is correct. So parents, and it has to have the s because children is plural. So parents has to be uh, plural as well. Okay. So parents and children. All right, so some good tips there for you to keep in mind uh, when you're doing your exam to make sure that you're not losing any easy marks. A uh, quick question back at all of you. Um, what was your score from the 10 raw score? So what did you get? How did you do on that part one? And the reason I ask that is because for those students who really need that 6.5 band or seven band or more, uh, for part one, uh, you should uh, be aiming to get eight or more correct, okay? Uh, part one is the easiest. So if you're losing three, four, five bands, uh, raw scores in part one, you're going to be in some deep water when it comes to part two, three, and four for your uh, finished score. So uh, divas, karki, work on it, okay? you got to get definitely higher than six. Okay, it's got to be eight, nine, ten. Kaur seven, it's a, it's a bare minimum, okay? You don't want to be losing too many points here, all right? Okay, so, uh, and for those students who are doing listening for a second or third time, I know some of you are in these classes regularly. By the way, we will be releasing new exams in the next couple months, but um, if you're doing these again and again, uh, at this point, if you've done this part one before, you should be looking to get um, 9, 10, correct? You shouldn't be making any mistakes on the second run, okay? All right, so uh, students, let's get into it. Now we're going to do uh, section two, or as they call it now, part two. So they're not going to say section anymore. They're going to say part two. So um, as we do part two... Same thing, please do not write your answers into the chat. We'll go through them together after, just like we did now. I'll give you some strategy, give everybody a fair chance. And for those of you who are just joining, uh, make sure that you're trying to use a headset if possible and turn your volume up. If it's quiet, I have max volume on my side with my mic and speaker. So we're gonna get right into it without further ado. And again, just do your best, use logic, use strategy. Here we go, back to our website. And of course, this is now coming from CD3 and track two, for those of you that have our exams. All right. Now turn to section two. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section two. You will hear a recording of a university campus tour. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon, everyone. If you're here for the university campus tour, you're in the correct place. There are two purposes for this tour. For prospective students, you get to see the campus where you may be studying in a few months, and you get to learn some interesting information which may convince you to look favorably on our university. For parents, you get to learn what life is like at this university, so you know where you are sending your kids off to this autumn. Before we start the tour, I'd like to give you some background information. This university was originally opened in 1686, although from 1745 to 1805, it was shut down due to a lack of funding. The university is composed of 23 buildings, which were built in one of three periods. There were four original buildings in 1686, 
A dozen more buildings were constructed in the period from 1805 to 1815, and the final seven buildings have been added in the past 10 years. So there is a fascinating mix of 17th century, 19th century, and quite modern architecture. The first building we are going to look at is called the Prescott Building, named after the university's first chancellor, William Chester Prescott. As you can probably tell, this is one of the university's original buildings completed in 1686. The building is actually quite unique in shape. It is approximately 40 metres long, while only 8 metres wide. It also has these interesting circular areas attached to each corner, four of them in all. These four circular areas each house a large bell. None of the bells work today, however. As we walk in the door, I'd like to point out all of the beautiful Persian carpets on the floor. These carpets were donated to the university by a former student almost 150 years ago. This is very common for former students who have done well in life to give back to the university. Some give money, some give land, some give gifts such as Persian carpets. One former student even gave the university his pub after he died. By the way, that pub, which is located at the intersection of 3rd Street and Pine Avenue, gives students of the university a 30% discount. Now, if that's not a selling point for this university, I don't know what is. On a serious note, it is our outstanding education which makes our university a top competitor on the global front. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. Before we go any further, are there any questions? No? Right then. Next we are going to visit the University Library. As you see in front of the library, there is a beautiful fountain which shoots water high up in the air. Once again, the funding for the fountain came from a former student, in this case a well-known artist. It was constructed just 15 years ago at the cost of £50,000. As we step into the library, I think what you'll notice at first is the fact there are no books. Indeed, there are no books at all on the entire ground floor. On the five upper floors, however, there are over three million books. The library's collection has been built over time through private donations, gifts from former students, as well as university purchases. There is also a special collections area where there are original works dating back to the year 1588. Next in our itinerary is a visit to the sporting facilities. Here at the university we have over a dozen different facilities for almost any sport you can imagine, ranging from football and rugby to tennis and squash to archery and cricket. Our rugby team has won the national championship three out of the last five years. As you'll see on your left is a famous wall where we put pictures of. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. And again, students, use that time to check your answers. We'll go through the answers together one at a time, make sure that we get them all right, and maybe talk a bit of strategy as well. So first we had to uh, fill in this form here. Now this was a campus university uh, tour, and maybe some of you got that when we were reviewing part one. As you maybe recall, in part one, I quickly looked at the kind of topics of part two, three, and four, so that I can get an idea of what they're about ahead of time. You might be able to do that in your paper-based exam, and if you can, it's a good strategy. Okay, so here I saw that it's something about a university. So the uh, tour guide gives us some background information and starts by saying when this university opened. Uh, for number 11, and Chetan, Omar, Jiwan, Maksud, and many others, uh, believe that that date was 1686, and indeed it was, okay? 
So keep in mind in English for years, uh, we usually do two numbers, two numbers. So 1686, uh, that's what you had to listen for. So for these years, make sure to know your double digits, okay? For the IELTS, know your double digits, okay? 1474, 1922, okay? Know your double digits. It's very, very important because there's a very good chance that one of your answers and one of the listening parts will definitely be that way, okay? So knowing your double digits. All right, then in uh, this time period, it was shut down, and then um, it's the tour guide explains when these buildings were built and how many of them. So he says between 1805 and 1815, there were a number of buildings constructed. How many buildings uh, were constructed for number 12? Wolfing DC says 23, Muxud says 12. Uh, in this time period, uh, he actually says a dozen, okay? Now, a dozen means 12, so the easiest answer here would be 12 buildings. It's the faster way to write the answer. The number is faster than the word, and of course, you don't risk spelling mistakes. So when you hear a dozen, write 12. If you hear half a dozen, we use that often in English as well, then write six. Anybody knows uh, the expression baker's dozen? It's an interesting expression in English. Ba baker's dozen. Anybody know how many a baker's dozen is? And of course, it's because we often talk about donuts, for example. Okay, so what is a baker's dozen? Just for fun. Let's see if anybody's familiar with this expression in English. Evangeline McDowell. Very good. Yeah, a baker's dozen is 13. Why? because the uh, baker's generous. So the baker says, okay, you get 12 donuts plus one. <laughs> the baker, the baker's friendly. So the baker gives you one more, okay? So a baker's dozen is 13. Otherwise, a dozen means 12, okay? That's just for fun. But you can use that. If you go into a bakery and you say, I'd like a baker's dozen, then they'll say, okay, I'm gonna give you 12 in the box and one in your hand, all right? Okay. Um, that's usually because the box only fits 12 <laughs> donuts or pastries. All right, uh, so in the past something years, seven buildings were constructed. So this one here, number 13, how many buildings uh, were, or how, in how many years were seven buildings constructed? Number 13 is 10, that's right, it was 10, in the past 10 years. And again, the number is easier than the word, so just write 10. Now, you should know that in your writing task two, you should write words zero to 10, okay? In uh, English writing, the standard for essays is usually write words zero to 10. But in these answer sheets, you can just use the numbers, okay? All right, uh, number 14. This was a little bit of a diagram. Uh, identification. The Prescott building, which was the original building built in 1686, has which layout here? A, B, or C? So what does that building look like? A, B, or C? Uh, the correct answer was B, okay? And the reason we know that is because uh, he gives us the dimensions. I th think he says eight feet by four. 50 or something like that. So you know that it's a very long building. I think he even says it's a long building. And then, he's, and then he says there are these circular shapes in each corner. So there are a couple of different points that the uh, person says, which lets you know that the correct answer is B. When you're looking at these diagram type questions, students, uh, see the differences, okay? So here you see squares and squares, here you see circles. So you're listening for square or circle. Here, you're listening for rectangle, okay, or a square. Square is when the sides are even, like five by five. A uh, rectangle is when they're uneven length, so for example, uh, five by eight, okay? So rectangle, rectangle, 
square, square, circle, square. Look for those differences. Okay, Prashant says, hey, Adrian, that was 40 by 8. Okay, yeah, I think you're right, Prashant. It was 40 by 8, but we get this very long uh, building. I don't know why, but a long, long time ago, in the 16, 1700s, they liked to build these really long buildings for schools. If any of you watched Harry Potter, that main hall is kind of like that as well, well where it's really, really long. So schools tended to be these really long, narrow types of buildings. All right, um, here we go. So question number 15, write no more than two words. So again, two words and or a number. How many years ago were the Persian carpets uh, donated? How many years ago were they donated by a former student? Yeah, so 150. Okay, 150. You don't need the word years because it's in the question. Okay, and if you write years ago, then that would be wrong. Okay, because it's three words. So again, if you write 150 years, that's okay, uh, but just 150 is enough in this case because we have the measure. If you have the measure in the question, you only need the number. You don't have to repeat the measure. It will save you a little bit of time, okay? So it's 150. All right. Let's keep going here. So for number 16, uh, this was uh, a local pub that was donated to the university by another former student. And what kind of a discount does this pub give? 30, 40, or 3%, A, B, or C? Again, the correct answer is A. Make sure you're using letters, not the numbers. It was 30%. Three is silly. Logic tells me that would not really be anything to go home and rejoice about. Um, 40 that might be a little bit too much. Uh, 30 looks good. So logic here can help you as well if you happen to be daydreaming. Hopefully you're not um, and miss the answer. So 30 would be your best guess as well. Okay, the last one was a complete the summary. Here you had to catch the words. This was getting a little bit more difficult, a little bit more tricky. You have to know the spelling. You have to be quick with your writing, okay? So uh, here we go. Write no more than two words, so two words maximum, and or a number. That means you can have a word and a number. Uh, so in front of the library, there is a beautiful something. Uh, what is uh, in front of the library? Yeah, it's a fountain, and fountain is spelled like this, fountain, okay, F-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. -A, a fountain, of course, is what shoots water like that, okay, so that would be a fountain shooting the water into the air, right? It's, a, it's also called a water feature. That's another uh, synonym for a fountain. It's called a water feature. Okay, um, inside the library, the ground floor has something books. How many books are on the ground floor? Again, this is repeated a couple of times um, because it's a surprising kind of statement. Yeah, it's no books, no books. Of course, it protects the books from flood or from danger. So the books are all on the upper floors. You can also guess that from the word however. However, the upper floors house over 3 million books. The collection was built by donations, gifts, and university purchases. Additionally, there is a something area, number 19. Uh, what was number 19? That was a little bit tricky, looking for that band nine level student that probably knows what that actually means, maybe visited a library in English. It's a special collections. Now this is a tricky one because collection is actually countable. If you have multiple collections, then they're called collections. So you can actually count collections. And in this case, it is called a special collections area. Special collection is not enough. You need the S in this case to get it correct. It's a special collections area. So you had to catch that S. Students, really train your ears for that S sound. 
okay? Especially for some of these tricky ones here um, because it matters and you need the S for this one to get it correct, okay? So it's special collections area. All right, um, with works dating back to 1588, there are many sporting facilities, including the rugby field, which is home to the rugby team, which has won three of the past five what? Billy says national championship. Um, Billy, so close, but you need that S, okay? Because it's plural. It's three of five. So it's national championships, okay? National championships with the S, okay? Pay really careful attention. Of course, you can count national championships, okay? They're very much countable, all right? Okay, students, so those are the correct answers for part two. Uh, what did you get out of 20? For those of you who were here for both uh, part one and part two, uh, what was your score from uh, 20 for part one and two? How did you do? The reason I ask that is because for part one and two, you should be looking at, let's say, 16 or more if you want band 6, 7 or higher, 6.5, 7 or higher. So, um, yeah, for Rizobek, 18, that's great. Billy, 18 is good. Jiwan, 18 is good. We got, got that in the reverse, but yeah. Uh, Janil, almost, okay? 15 is not bad. 15, you're kind of okay, all right? Shaikh, 17 is okay. All right, students, uh, so you're aiming for 16 or more in part two because part three and part four will be more difficult. So it's a higher chance of uh, getting more wrong. Uh, Rana, so close to a perfect score, almost. Yeah, maybe the uh, um, special collections uh, got you. Um, all right, students, so tomorrow we're going to finish part three and part four of this listening test. If you can't wait and you want this exam and all of our other exams, uh, you can get them with all of our HD videos as well. Uh, academic students, aehelp.com, general IELTS students, gltshelp.com. Use the code R4TYJ today uh, to get that 20% discount from the premium package. And you can get all six of our exams. And you can get all of the videos done by me and a couple other teachers do some videos as well. And uh, tomorrow, more live classes, uh, so more listening. And I believe we will have a task one as well for uh, members. Have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. If it's late in your country, sweet dreams to you. If your day is just starting, then uh, look upward and onward. Much love to all of you. Bye for now from Budapest. I'm Adrian.